This is Julian speaking, welcoming you to another battle report out of the breach. Let's continue the journey through Tauber. The last time we saw the humans of the starter set against some cultists. Because we recorded the games back to back, we will see the starter set humans again, but this time the cultists will be joined by a few fawns. Let's find out how this story about the hunt for moonstones unfolds. continued to keep things simple and decided again to play with just four models each and fight over five moonstones. I bring the humans from the starter set as my troop to fight for the commonwealth. With the Baron von Fancyhead, Eric the Squire, Flintlock and Friar Flavius. Bernd brings some cultists and fawns as his troop to fight for the Leshevold. With Regan, a Leshevold priestess, Claus, Hoff, and Mr. Toodles. Here you can see the depth of the moonstones on the battlefield. Turn 1. The Leshevold have the initiative and Reagan jogs and spends two energy to cast Verdant Growth to create a wooded patch on the battlefield. She needs greens and declares a green too, and the humans accept. She can create a wooded patch within 8 inches but she wants it right in front of her to be in cover from Flintlock's musket. She then ends her activation with one energy left. Friar Flavius jogs and steps once to be in base contact with the moonstone and spends two energy to harvest twice to reduce the depth of the moonstone from three to one. Klaus jogs and spends three energy to step three times. As a reaction to these four separate actions, the humans take four reaction steps. Eric steps three times and Flintlock once. They do this because the Baron is next to activate and he uses his once per game ability Rallying Cry. The energy on all other friendly humans within a pulse of 8 inches is restored up to the number of blue dots currently remaining on their health bar. No human is hurt, so Flintlock, Eric and Friar Flavius restore their energy back to their maximum of 3. Then the Baron jogs and takes 2 steps. Hoff jogs and Friar takes a reaction step. Eric uses <clears throat> my hero on Flintlock, jogs and spends his last energy to harvest the moonstone down to two. Mr. Toodles jogs to hide himself behind his horned friend Hoff and Friar Flavius takes a reaction step. Flintlock uses take aim and Hoff takes a reaction step forward. He then jogs and Mr. Toodles takes a reaction step to dance behind his friend. Flintlock fires at Hoff 
and can draw four cards, because he aimed before and declares a green one. The Leshevold accept and Hoff suffers three damage. Flintlock reloads his musket and Hoff steps to be in base contact with the Moonstone. And that's the end of turn one. Turn 2. The Leshevold win the initiative and Mr. Toodles activates, spends two energy to use healing on Hoff to look after his wounded friend. He can draw five cards and declares a blue two and would heal Hoff for three. Because that would be enough to get Hoff on full wounds, the humans call bluff. But as an honest fawn he is, Mr. Toodles was telling the truth and Hoff heals for three. And there is no reason to put down another card. He spends his last energy to use a blighted elixir on Hoff and declares a green two to move Hoff two inches directly away. The humans are in the mood and call bluff again, but as expected, Mr. Toodles was telling the truth, but again doesn't want to put down another card. Hoff is moved two inches and Toodles jogs happily fluting backwards because he doesn't want to meet the spanking club of the friar. Flintlock takes aim and fires his musket targeting Hoff and declares a green too. The Leshevold call OK and Hoff suffers four wounds. Flintlock spends his last energy to pick up the Moonstone and jogs slowly over to Eric. Klaus harvests for one and jogs to meet the Baron and spends one energy to attack. He can draw six. His melee stat of three gains plus one because there is one other cultist within six inches and he initiated the attack, another plus two. The Baron can draw seven. He has a melee stat of five and Eric hands out plus two to nobles within four inches. Klaus plays a rising attack and the Baron was expecting a fallen swing and plays a high guard wrongfully judged and the Baron would suffer two plus two because Klaus is doing impact damage and minus two because he wears his plate armor. Two damage for the Baron. Klaus spends his last energy to attack again. He plays a sweeping cut and upgrades into his signature move flail around madly. And the Baron plays a fallen swing and can upgrade into his Master Strike. The Baron suffers two and Klaus would suffer three, but the protection prevents that. But the Master Strike is able to do follow-up attacks against the Sweeping Cut. And the Baron plays a Rising Attack to deal two plus one for his Longsword against Klaus. And during the end step, Klaus suffers one damage because he played his signature move. Eric fears for his wounded Baron and spends one energy to use Field Medic, can draw three cards and declares a blue two. The Leshevold call OK because Fancy Head lost more than two wounds and they don't want to give Eric the possibility to heal even more without spending energy. So the Baron heals for two and Eric uses my hero on the Baron to give him two energy. He then jogs away from Hoff and his horns. Hoff activates and spends one energy to use his furious charge and is moved three inches towards the Baron. If his next action is a melee attack against the same target, 
he deals plus one damage. Von Fancy Head feels a tingle in his spine and remembers an old wound he got in a fight with a half-naked giant and his mighty chains and spends one energy to do a reaction step to be not within one inch of Hoff. Hoff has a melee range of two, but his signature move can just damage models within one inch. As added benefit, the Baron is no longer engaged with Klaus and just has to deal with one mad fawn. Hoff spends one energy to attack and can draw six cards, the Baron seven. Hoff expects the deadly master strike on a fallen swing and plays a high guard, and the bloodthirsty Baron plays his fallen swing. Perfect counter. The Baron cannot deal any damage and Hoff can play a follow-up attack. He chooses a rising attack. One damage, plus two for impact, plus one for the attack after the furious charge, minus two for the plate armor. Two damage on the Baron. Hoff jogs to get very close to the Baron. Even a reaction step cannot get the Baron out of head but range. And he spends his last energy to attack again. Hoff plays a rising attack, and this time the Baron listens to his screaming squire who tries to give him combat tips all the time. Watch out! He's attacking from below! And the Baron chooses a low guard to counter the rising attack and can play two fallen swings to deal seven damage to Hoff and the fawn is slain. The horn of Gondor shatters on the ground in two halves and Claus kisses his friend goodbye. <clears throat> Sorry, wrong movie. Back to the game. Friar Flavius spends two energy to heal the Baron. He can draw three cards and declares a blue one and the Leshevold call bluff. They must have seen the friar blush because he got caught in the act and the green one is revealed and can be replaced with a catastrophe. Friar Flavius suffers two wounds for his lie and Reagan can trigger expel. Whenever any character suffers a catastrophe, after resolving, Reagan can draw an arcane card, take a look at it and place it face down besides her character card. At any point, the Leshevold can add the card to their arcane attack or defense hand. The card is discarded and shuffled back into the deck after being used and Reagan can hold a number of cards equal to the turn number. Friar jogs over to the Moonstone and spends his last energy to harvest it down to one. Reagan jogs and spends three energy to use her Malachite ritual on Fancy Hat. She can draw four cards. She can ignore the wooded patch because she is within one inch of it, but Claus is in the way and the Baron gets light cover. She is looking for red to damage the Baron and her damage gets straight through the armor, because passive abilities are ignored. She declares a red one, the humans accept and the Baron suffers one wound. The Baron, hurt by the magic energies, limps over to attack the priestess herself. The Mad Fawn is too dangerous for him in his wounded state and he can stay outside of Reagan's melee range so that she cannot harm him. He has to move in a circling motion around Claus because a model is not allowed to use a jog to get further away from a model that's engaging him. At this point, the Baron is not any longer in four inches to Eric, so he cannot benefit from his squire ability. 
spends his first energy to attack and can draw six cards, because Klaus is also engaging him and Reagan can draw two. The Baron can play two thrusts, but Reagan plays a high guard. Zero times two is still zero, but the Baron can add plus one for his longsword. One damage to Reagan and the Baron attacks again. He can play three thrusts and Reagan a low guard, and she can upgrade the low guard to her signature move, Mist Form, to reduce all damage suffered by two. The Baron can deal four reduced by two, two damage to her, and spends his last energy to attack again. The Baron plays a fallen swing and Reagan a thrust. She cannot deal damage and the Baron can upgrade to his Master Strike, deals two to her and can do a follow-up attack with a rising attack to deal the last two damage and Reagan is slain. And the arcane card she was holding onto is shuffled back into the deck. And that's the end of a bloody turn two. The Leshevold win the initiative and Claus attacks Fancy Head before the Baron gets the chance to heal. Claus plays a sweeping cut and upgrades to his signature move Flail Around Madly. And the Baron plays a High Guard. No damage to the Baron thanks to his armor and Klaus suffers one for his flailing. Quick note from editing. The upgrade to the signature move is optional, and it would have been better to just attack with a sweeping cut. That was totally overlooked in the heat of battle. Another attack, Claus with a rising attack and the Baron with a fallen swing. One wound for the Baron who barely survives, and Claus suffers four and is slain but we have to check if he manages to get back up again. Klaus has an ability called Tub Thumping. Once per turn, when he is slain, flip an arcane card. If the result is a catastrophe, he is slain. Otherwise, he remains in play with X health boxes remaining, where X is the value on the flipped card. And he flips a red one and is alive with one wound. Last attack from Klaus, and the Baron spends his last energy to go for it. With one health left and a mad fawn in front of him, he sees his whole life passing by and mobilizes his last resources. Both play a fallen swing. Klaus deals no damage to the Baron, but the Baron can deal one to Klaus, and he is slain. And yes, the extra cards the Baron has drawn were two fallen swings. Mr. Toodles sees all his friends down and remembers suddenly he forgot some cookies in the oven and flees in panic. We end the game here and it's a win for the Commonwealth. Wow, that was fast again. But it was a lot of fun. I am happy I could show a few more rules, abilities and interactions. The first two games were recorded back to back. For the next recording session I want to play five models each and fight over seven moonstones. Maybe there is a bit more moving and harvesting in the first two turns. Because when the melee fight starts it gets very bloody very fast. I just have to think about who I want to add to my human troop. Gotchgat. Gotchgat would be an awesome bodyguard for the Baron. Or Quack 
Yes, Quack would be a superb healer and could support Flintlock. Oh, and, and you know who can support Flintlock? Old Caldos. I could bluff like hell. Or, or I could bring Natty to steal some stones. Or, or Kaufman to expand the noble theme. Oh, so many great options. What do you think about Moonstone? Have you played it before or is it new to you? Let me know in the comments down below. I will paint up some minis, edit more footage and hope to see you soon for another battle report out of the breach.